Michigan's Attorney General dealt a blow to Republicans challenging the 2020 election results Friday, stating that the Office of Auditor General has no legal authority to audit local election results. Democratic Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson requested clarification after Michigan's Auditor General Doug Ringler planned to recreate audits conducted by Michigan County clerks. It's part of a post-election review Ringler is conducting under pressure from local Republicans. They're calling for a new audit of Michigan's 2020 results in which former President Donald Trump lost to Joe Biden by 154,000 votes. Ringler was appointed to the Office of Auditor General by the Republican-controlled state legislature, but he is not a state or local election official. Friday's opinion says, quote, OAG does not have a constitutional right to demand or compel access to local government records, including election ballots and voting equipment. It further states that Secretary Benson reserves the right to deny access to voting equipment and local election records in order to protect their physical integrity and security. Jason Cable Rowe is a Republican strategist and former executive director of the Michigan Republican Party. He resigned from that post just a few months after taking office after he said this about Donald Trump's election loss, quote, the election wasn't stolen, he blew it. And Jason joins me now. Jason, welcome. Thanks very much for being with us. Thanks, Elaine. So let's talk about Republican messaging going into the 2022 midterms. Politico quotes you saying, the one variable that we should be able to control ourselves is the one thing that is working against us. Now, you were speaking about the ongoing efforts to relitigate or overturn the 2020 election. Do you think that's what Republicans running on restoring election integrity are doing? Well, I think when you look at the historical trends in American politics, the first midterm election of a first term president tends to go to the opposition party's benefit. When you look at the uh, variables in the political environment, all of them are breaking the Republicans' way except for one, and that is so many of uh, Republican voters and activists keeping their feet mired in the 2020 election instead of focusing on the 2022 election. And I think that's a losing strategy. This election is over. It has been certified. No amount of relitigating it, reexamining it, auditing it, whatever mechanism they continue to push is going to change that outcome. And what I think it demonstrates to the swing voters that we need to be successful in 2022 is that not, we're not being sane about where we are. And I think it's limiting our ability to talk about some very real uh, opportunities to dissect democratic leadership in this state and in this country and what they're doing to, I think, dismantle um, our economy, our culture, and so many other things that Republican voters care deeply about. CBS News polling finds as recently as a few weeks ago, 74 percent of Trump voters and 69 percent of all Republicans still believe there was widespread voter fraud in 2020, despite no proof of it. So how do you see election integrity as a message for the GOP? What do you think could happen if that turns out to be sort of a main focus for Republicans in 2022? I think there's a couple things to consider. You know, when we talk about election fraud, there's a, a couple different things people are talking about. Obviously, there's the idea that the election was stolen at the ballot box, whether it's Dominion voting machines or something else. What did happen and is indisputable is that Democratic secretaries of state in important states in the 2020 election use the COVID pandemic to change the rules to benefit Democrats. I believe Republican legislatures should have stood up, defunded those secretaries of state, those elections in order to take a stand and prevent that from happening. But I do think that that was something that I would consider fraudulent that was used to change the outcome of the election. Um, you know, one thing we've talked about in a lot of the states, Michigan being one, Texas, Georgia, and many others, is the idea that we do need to reform our election system. And it's not so much that I think we need to do it to address the perceived um, fraud of 2020, but when you have a plurality or even a majority in some states of voters, regardless of who they are and regardless of why they believe what they believe, uh, thinking that the system is corrupt, we need to pass reforms that reassure those voters that the system is not corrupt. And why that is important is every time we have an election outcome that is controversial, 
we're going to have accusations of fraud. So I think it's important that we don't go through this every two years when there's a disagreeable outcome. The very common sense things like uh, requiring voter ID should not be controversial. They are far from what uh, Democrats are saying that they are racist. They're pretty common sense. Everyone agrees. I mean, there's plenty of polling nationally and within the state of Michigan that a majority of voters, a plurality of Democrats, a majority of black voters believe voter ID is a reasonable reform. And I think if we did that, we could help alleviate a lot of the controversy that we're seeing out of the 2020 election. Our time is running short, but very quickly, on the American Rescue Plan, which enjoys uh, popular support, what do you say to Republicans about running with that as the backdrop? What do you think the framing of the sort of narrative should be? Because as we know, it's not just Democrats um, and their constituents who benefit from this, but Republicans and their constituents as well. That may be true, but the reality is, at this point, we can't afford it. We're at about $28.5 trillion in debt. We're facing probably more than 30 trillion by the end of this year. And I think Republicans should focus on the price tag here. We have continued to send out checks to Americans to not work. Uh, we are seeing inflation from anywhere from gasoline to lumber supplies to groceries to every household product that anyone relies on. We, we see uh, restaurants and businesses with help wanted signs. People can't get their cars serviced. There's so many things that are happening because we don't have people going to work because they're staying at home and collecting these checks. And I think we need to focus on what this is doing to our economy, not in the short term, but in the long term. Because right now people seem to feel like things are okay. But the reality is the long term prospect economically for our country is not very good. Jason Cable Rowe, we're out of time. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Elaine.